Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Traders. Just after 10 a.m. on December 13th, and we are joined by Commodity Research Group's Andy LeBeau. Andy's been joining us regularly, typically on the day of the uh, DOE releases, breaking down the numbers, but we have him the day after, so he's had a lot of time to digest, take a look at everything. How's it going today, Andy? It's going great, Michael. How's it going with you? Uh, it's going well. We've been active. A lot going on with the website, a lot going on in the markets. So, uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, keeping us busy. But uh, let's talk energy. We have a big energy day, a lot going on. I see actually since we've been speaking, energy just popped. We, the low of the morning was 50.35. We're right now trading 51.35 in crude. And we we're just trading at like 50.85. So, uh, you know, we just popped up. So w what's going on in crude oil? And if you want to start maybe with what uh, the data was yesterday. Yeah, we'll just start with the data and then we'll we'll try to explain what's going on with uh, with petroleum. Yeah, I'll try to explain, but I think it may be somewhat difficult. Um, look at just looking at the numbers, uh, there probably was some disappointment uh, in the crude number. It drew by uh, a million barrels. The API the, the night before it had reported a ten million draw uh general expectations were two to three we had uh we had a three million draw um yeah i was a little disappointed but i have to tell you the crude stocks are, are gonna draw here over the next uh at least for the balance of of december which is seasonal uh owing to uh two factors one lifo which may not be as big of big of a factor this year uh refiners try to reduce their uh, last layer of inventory uh, for accounting purposes, and two, for tax reasons. Uh, there are ad valorem taxes in the state of Texas and in Louisiana, and uh, refiners want to move their uh, inventory out of, uh, out of storage so they don't get hit with uh, taxes. So we will see stocks fall. Uh, the market, I, I don't know how bullish the market's going to take that because they tend to rise in uh, January as, as those inventories are, are put back in. So, um, you know, that's something to look, look for over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have them, we have them drawing like, uh, seven to 9 million barrels, uh, coming up for the, for the balance of, uh, December won't be bearish, but it may not necessarily be uh, bullish either. Uh, gasoline biz, big disappointment to me. I thought we'd see a draw, but, uh, production was, uh, a little, was, too high, frankly. Uh, demand not great either. Uh, and uh, we saw a build. I, I think gas is going to draw for the rest of December as refiners adjust their uh, gasoline production relative to uh, diesel production. And uh, diesel fell. Uh, we thought it would be unchanged. The market was looking for a, a draw and it came in uh, right in line with uh, expectations. I, I would say that is uh, that, that was neutral. Um, and total stocks uh, fell by 16 million. So, so by so that that was you know I thought that was that was bullish uh, for for a total stock draw uh, runs unchanged. They're gonna they're gonna probably stay around unchanged here for the rest of uh, for the rest of December. And demand this week was demand this week was pretty good. Uh, up a million barrels a day over last week. Uh, the four-week average, um, you know, the four-week average is, is, is good, um, you know, up a million barrels a day, but that's just the, on uh, weekly report. Um, you know, talking about demand, uh, it's interesting, Michael, that uh, neither the um, EIA, OPEC, or the IEA, which came out today, has revised demand down uh, for next year. Um, you know, may, maybe slightly. So, you know, as, as for all the hand wringing about the growth in uh, global demand um, for petroleum, uh, so far demand's been pretty good uh, in fourth quarter and expectations for next year. Now, those numbers may be get, may be marked down, you know, as we as we go forward. But right now, uh, you know, the top three agencies are, are looking for. Uh, pretty robust growth in uh, demand for 2019. So you've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, it, it was just two months ago that we were trading above 77 or above 70, let's call it. And, you know, everything, every every indicator we were looking at was bullish. You right. were definitely more uh, cautious at that level. That said, I don't think you were looking for levels in the low 50s. I think you were no. looking at the time more like 60 no, to 65, right. that sort of range. Exactly. So what 
I'm starting to see a lot of people come in more on the bearish side. Um, and at the same time, just a few months ago, we were talking about a lot of people that were coming in when we were above 70, saying that there's no reason for it to go lower. You know, it's going higher. You know, right. It's what, going to 100. There were all those hundred dollar calls that were people were buying. Remember that? Absolutely. Exactly. I, I saw stories on Bloomberg about uh, oil going to 150. And, right. Uh, Pe you know, people lose their you know, they tend to lose their minds at the top and at the bottom. So what are the key factors in your uh, pro in your thought about what's really going to move oil over the coming three months, the next three months? I think, um, well, let's look at uh, let's look at the two main factors that we always look at supply and demand. Uh, but th this to me, um, the, the decline here has been more of a supply um story than than a demand story uh yeah the market i think got way overextended at uh at 77 but um you know you look at the production coming out of the u.s in the second half of the year up a million barrels a day from may you look at what saudi did from may up a million barrels a day you look at what russia did in from uh may june up four or five hundred thousand barrels a day uh a surge in non-opec production was so great that the market just couldn't absorb it uh demand again as i said has, has been all right you know demand has actually come in as forecast but these supply numbers uh were not it was, simply were not nobody had saudi producing at 11 one in the you know record at 11 one in november similarly no one had the u.s producing uh at record numbers here in uh november and december back in uh back in may and june so let's look forward what's going to happen supplies are going to be cut the supplies are going to be cut uh opec said they're going to cut eight hundred thousand. um you know michael you know i'm a barrel counter i think they cut 1.2 million barrels a day you know saudi's already cut uh from 11 1 to to 10 2. uh russia it's going to take them time to cut but i think they're going to come through with a 250,000 barrel of cut Per day cut. Iran is still going down, and Venezuela is, is in is in continues in a downward spiral. Spiral. Um, so you know we are going to see these um, we are going to see these production cuts, and that, and that's going to be constructive for the market. Um, you know, right now what's going on is you know the market is still trying to deal with. Oops, trying to, is that I think it's a, I think it's Saudi minister. Yeah, we're right on the we're right on the same. Let me get rid of this. Take that off, Michael. Um, in any event, uh, I think that what's going to what we're going to see more than what OPEC has. Uh, you could patch him in if you want. Huh? You could patch him into the site, the, the Saudi minister. It is. Oh my goodness. It's it's Al Fali. He's saying that they're cutting. Uh, you know, he's saying that they're cutting by zero by a million barrels a day, which is exactly what he did say, incidentally. But the market didn't take it that way. You know, the market, I think, is um, undervaluing uh, what the Saudis are doing, or what I think, what I really believe is going on. There's so much inventory that's been built up because of these supply surges that the market's got to eat through it. And it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a while. Um, you know, it may, it may take weeks. It may, it may take months. I doubt it. Um, but, you know, all of a sudden, as we head into January and February, uh, the market's going to be way more balanced. And that's going to be bullish. So I have a hard time with people who are turning bearish here. You know, I, I, yeah, could the market make new lows? Certainly. Look at the technicals. They don't look good. You know, we're... we're We've had all this bullish news and the market hasn't done anything. But, I, you know, I think we're going to be trading. My view is we're going to be trading sideways. You know, maybe we do make new lows and there's a cascade of selling, you know. But I, I think these are, you know, I, I think if, if you can have a 40 handle on this, uh, that's, you know, way undervalued given what the fundamentals are going to be next quarter and next next half.
So what do you think the trading range might be for uh, what do you think is a, you know, a five or six dollar trading range that you think might be a reasonable expectation? Are you thinking like 55 to 60 ish sort of a level? I think I think yeah. if we get, you know, if there's a really cold winter in the northern hemisphere, that's a, that's an extra 200 to 300 thousand barrels a day on the, on the demand side. So that that could really, you know, that could get um, TI up near near 60. Uh, even without it, you know, I, I think we could get up to 56, 57. And on the downside, look, look we, yeah, as I just said, uh, could we get into the, the high 40s? Yeah, we yeah, we could. Look at look at the chart. You know, it isn't like, you know, you're, you're really, you know, Jones in to buy it that I mean, people may be Jones in to buy it here. But if you were a pure technician, you know, you look at that chart and it's not quite in the bottoming formation yet. I don't think. Um, just wondering, we actually have uh, somebody asking if there was any news that just came out in the last half hour. Or so, uh, you know, we were trading well, just before we started talking, we we're trading about 5075 and traded up to 5161. I haven't seen anything on the wires yet. Um, but, you know, as quickly as we dropped yesterday, we dropped pretty uh, quickly from 52 and a quarter down to 5075 yesterday in the final, uh, you know, half hour of trading or so. On uh, nothing. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see anything really to to cause that uh, cause that decline. You know, I haven't seen anything. You know, in my, in my own in my view that you know should should have had the market coming off like this post OPEC. But you know, we're we're still probably still probably some liquidation. And it's interesting that you said that you know people are turning really bearish here, and I I just don't you know I I just don't see that. Uh, what about as we come into the end of the year, uh, Commodity Research Group, what are you guys focused on in Q1 um, business-wise and market-wise, things like that? Well, market-wise, um, we are focused, I guess, uh, you know, clearly the the total commodity, you know, the commodity world has, has come off pretty, pretty hard. And um you know, I, th I think certainly in the metals, um, in the base metals, which Ed covers, you know, a lot of that is what uh, Chinese demand is, uh, you know, where Chinese demand is going to come in, come, you know, come into and whether or not um, the trade, you know, obviously we're all we're all focused on the, tra on the, the trade war between between China, and U.S. on. Um, you know, on energy, um, yeah, sure. We're we're certainly looking at underlying demand and where these where these numbers are uh, going to come through. But it, the big thing is what's going to happen with the, the sanctions and the waivers. Uh, that's going to be decided in May, um, and there's an OPEC meeting in April. Uh, they they moved it up, to, so we'll see how OPEC deals with. Um, you know, how OPEC is going to deal with what they think the sanctions are going to be. Uh, we'll also be looking, obviously, at, at whether U.S. growth and production continues as, as strong, um, you know, as, we, as we've seen this year. So far, the forecasts are yes, um, but we'll see what these low, if these lower prices had any effect, uh, any effect on, uh, on production. Yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. Any other markets that you're looking at that uh, look like there's an interesting opportunity? Well, I, I always look at the you know, just getting back to uh, back to crude. Um, you know, I, I, and we've I think I've mentioned this before in the in the spreads in, in Brent. I don't, I don't know how much your subscribers do look at uh, at Brent spreads, but um, the the back of the Brent curve, uh, June Dees in particular. Uh, has flipped from contango to backwardation, and now it's kind of softening again. Uh, but the, but that's one I'm, I'm very much watching um, to see, you know, to see whether or not uh, that appreciates. It should, given the given the production cuts, will have a, more of an impact on um, you know the east, the eastern hemisphere, similar on the on the Dubai curve. Um, so so that's one market. That uh, you know, the, a curve market that that uh, we're watching pretty carefully. And in, ter in terms of cracks, you know, I think gasoline cracks have a chance to uh, improve. Um, diesel cracks, I think, are going to soften, but I wouldn't sell it because it's December. You know, it's the middle of December, um, so you know, th those are two things that uh, also 
you know, I'm also looking at, um, but sort of like I'm beginning to like gasoline a little bit more. Interesting. And what sort of range do you think in that one? Or like, uh, is that something, do you think we try, I, I, I guess if you're saying, well, I think gasoline, I think mean, you could see, you know, the front month of Feb gas crack it has been trading between seven and nine. I think that could move up to nine, nine to 11. Uh, the diesel crack, the Feb diesel crack anyway, um, you know, it's, it's in the mid twenties. The technicals look like it's going to hold here. Um, like I said, I fundamentally sort of want to sell it, but you know, it's, we're into the weather. So, you know, it's not, not a great, not a great sale. Um, and I, in terms of options, um, you know, one, one thing to look at if, if these vols continue to cheap to cheapen, since we're bullish, um, you know, I, I'd be looking at uh, maybe some call spreads. It might be a good way to play it. Um, you know, pick a. You, you could look if you're really bullish to 55, 60 in uh, February or even lower. You know, 52, 57, something like you know, five, a nice five dollar call spread uh, may may work nicely, particularly if, if, as I said, if the weather turns or sentiment, you know, uh, more people sentiment turns a, a little bit more uh, bullish you know certainly michael we see the big liquidation uh here's a great stat in um early october the net length of brent and um wti was eight hundred thousand barrels eight hundred thousand contracts it's now two hundred and sixty five thousand contracts so we've had you know, over 500,000 barrel a day, barrel, 500,000 contract, I keep saying barrel, 500,000 contract liquidation uh, in the net length. So certainly there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of spare capacity there to go, to go long, that's for sure. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, as we head into the end of the year, we're at interesting levels here in crude. Uh, we have expiration tomorrow in the uh, Jan uh, options. Um, but you know, we're far cry from where we were about two months ago, uh, a big difference in the uh, story in terms of what OPEC is doing and I guess what they plan to be doing. So it, it's going to be an interesting Q1, I think in all asset classes and energy is definitely in focus here. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. I think, I think Q1 is going to be, uh, is going to be very interesting and, um, you know, there's a lot going on politically, um, geopolitically. And fundamentally, um, you know, we'll see if sentiment, you know, sentiment begin, begins to turn. Yeah. Right yeah. now, it, seems, it still seems pretty demoralized. Despite, I mean, today we have a big rally, so maybe this is the start of it. Yeah. Well, we'll keep a close eye on it. I appreciate your thoughts, your insight. Uh, Andy LeBeau of Commodity Research Group. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, Michael. And, and one one last thing, sure. uh, please feel free to, to go to our new website, which is debuting, I think, uh, next week at www.commodityresearchgroup.com. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, definitely put some links in the chat room to that as well. So that's commodityresearchgroup.com. Yep. All right. We'll check well, out that information there. Nice. We'll yeah. Take a good look at that. All right. Thanks, Andy. Speak to you okay, soon. Okay. Thanks, Michael.